Zen Flesh, Zen Bones, story number 43, Zen and a Beggar's Life. Tosui was a well-known Zen teacher of his time, and that's true, he was. He had lived in several temples and taught in various provinces. The last temple he visited accumulated so many adherents that Tosui told them he was going to quit the lecture business entirely. He advised them to disperse and to go wherever they desired. And then he disappeared. It didn't quite happen like that. He was uh, assigned to be the head of a, of a temple, a training temple, Soto. And <clears throat> he was there for a number of years. And there were the, the burdens were so onerous to him. Just people coming at him with all the picayune things and all the budgetary issues and all the infighting and the dissatisfaction and the architectural issues and, you know, that he said, this is not practice. This is not what I want to do with my life. And so he left. And, you know, over the centuries, a number of people have made that choice. Not good, not bad, but that was the choice he made. And then he disappeared. Now, he was a well-known teacher. He had a lot of, res- people had a lot of respect for him. People were coming from many places to study with him at his temple. And then he left. And so, of course, people wondered, what happened to him? Where did he go? What did he do? And about three years after he left, one of his disciples discovered him living as a beggar underneath a bridge. Now, the freedom of mind to inhabit any realm without judgment, without fear, is an enormous freedom of mind. He was practicing in this way, resting in the Tao, resting in truth, resting in harmony. And his student discovered him and said, oh, please, Let me study some more with you. Let me come and live with you. Let me become your student. So he said, well, okay, I'll be be happy to share the Dharma with you. So you've got to dress as a beggar, though. Get rid of your fancy clothes, your monk's robes. Dress as a beggar. And so the monk did. They were there for a few days. And one of the fellow beggars died. They picked him up, took him off to the charnel ground, took care of him, came back under the bridge. Now, there's no heat, there's no comforts, there's no place to sleep, there's nothing, no food. And Tosui comes back and says, well, we don't have to beg today because this dead person left some food in his bowl. We can use that. And his disciple was just appalled. Not only am I totally miserable at every level, but now eating out of a dead person's bowl too much. I can't, I can't do this. And he left. And Tosui disappeared again. And this time, no one ever found him. One of the interesting teachers of contemporary dharma is Daihong Sanem from Korea, a woman teacher who was in a very abusive family when she was younger. She left home. She was living out in the woods. She had a deep awakening experience. And she lived in the woods in Korea throughout the winter for several years, just cruising as it was, just resting in the fundamental nature of mind not being concerned about the icing, not being concerned about all those things which to us are so important, but resting in the deep truth, which is inclusive. So this kind of person is a rare person, not better, not worse, but a rare person who touches the stream of truth and is no longer at the mercy of, they still have their own karma, no longer at the mercy of all of the 
vicissitudes, all of the limitations which we tend to think of as big obstacles. So how would we live if we had a life with no obstacle? How would we live if we had a life with no story?